What's up, Blizzard Savages? So today I'll show you how to make a cool little boat animation here. Paper boat going through the water, creating ripples. And we'll use the uh, dynamic plane physics for that. And for that, we need two things. We need what we have down here, the plane. That'll be our canvas. And then we need another object to uh, create those distortions. We need something for the, uh, the plane, the canvas here to react to. And that uh, object will be our brush. And in this case, our brush here is our little paper boat. So let's get started. All right, so here I have my uh, default cube right here, selecting. I'm going to delete it. I'm not going to use a cube. X key, delete. And I'm going to bring in a plane, shift A, mesh plane. And this plane will be my water plane. This will be uh, get this, this will be distorted later to create my ripples, to create my waves. So I'm going to make it 15 times bigger. Select it already. So I'm going to S, 1, 5, enter. There we go, 15 times bigger. Later, I can always resize it if I need to make it bigger or smaller. Uh, the next step here is vital for the simulation. So I'm at the tab key. Here we go. And then I'm going to right click my object and select subdivide right here. There we go. It's already subdivided. I'm going to go down here, click on subdivide there. And I'm going to add uh, more cuts. I'm going to increase the number of cuts to 100. There we go. Uh, depending on your computer, it might not be able to handle 100 cuts. If um, your computer starts to slow down, starts to lag, maybe you want to use a different plane with less cuts. Maybe try 80, 50 work your way down or up from the bottom. Also, uh, before I went in here and uh, created the subdivisions, let me hit the tab key for edit mode. Uh, I didn't click anywhere because if I did, I would deselect the plane. I want to keep it selected. So make sure you don't start clicking around. If you do, if you do uh, select an individual part of the plane here, like a vertex, just hit the A key to select all, then right click it, subdivide, and still don't click anywhere here. Go directly down here and increase your number of cuts to get additional subdivisions. Here we go. And the reason we need these subdivisions is that um, our distortion, it's going to happen along uh, the vertices here and the edges there. It needs these to uh, for it to bend. If we have no more cuts, it'll look a lot smoother. It'll look a lot better. We get a lot better uh, simulation. It won't look as blocky or as choppy. It'll look a lot neater. But um, we are limited by our, uh, by our computers here, by our graphics card. So uh, not every typical user has a strong graphics card, which can support a uh, um, a high polygon count, a high poly number count. So this is cool right here for now. All right, so that's good to go. Tab key for object mode. There you go, back to object mode. And now I'm going to go over here into the properties panel. Look for the sim uh, physics tab, which is this one right here. It looks like hydrogen or like a sun with a satellite, earth with a satellite. Uh, looks like some celestial body or something. So something orbiting it around it. So that one right there, click on it. Plane selected, click on Physics right there, physics properties, and then go up here and click on dynamic paint. Don't want the footprint right there, dynamic paint, bam. And this is going to be our canvas. So it says canvas there, but you still have to make it a canvas. You have to assign canvas to it. So you can click on add canvas. There we go. Now it's a canvas. It's still not one for waves. So we have to go down here where it's the surface type and where it says paint right here. You click on it and change it to waves. Paint would be for something else. We could have a uh, something slight over it, and it'll actually change the color to whatever the brush supposedly is. All right, so we got waves, and I'm gonna go with open borders right here. That way, the ripples um, go beyond the edges, because if that's not selected there, if it's not activated, the ripples actually bounce off the uh, the edges there, the waves, and then they come back. So depending on your animation, however you want to do it, uh, that one's optional. I just like to activate it. I think it looks a little neater. All right. So I got my plane there, ready to go. And now I need to get my, my boat so I can start making a brush here. So I'm going to go over to this website so I can download one. You can actually just use a cube, but I'm going to use a boat. I want a boat here, and I'm going to go over here to MakerBot. Uh, this website, Thingiverse, Thingiverse.com, Thingiverse.com. And you can get these free uh, STL and uh, OBJ files, which are 3D files, that you can bring it to Blender. Uh, these are typically used for 3D printing. But we can use them here in Blender. Cool thing about Thingiverse, you do not have to create an account. You do not have to sign in or anything to, uh, to download these files. Don't have to give them any information. So I'm going to go right here to the search bar. Click in there. Type in paper boat. I'm going to bring in a paper boat. Paper boat. Here we go. And I like this one right here. Little paper boat by, um, I think the artist's name is Pablo. I'm going to click on it. Oh, there's more over there. I'm going to go with this one because I know this one's just a plain boat. Some of these other ones, like this one, I think this one's uh, individual parts you got to assemble together. And I want one that's good to go out of the box. That one looks cool there, but I'm going to go with this one here. It seems like it occupies more space on the uh, on the plane. 
I want something that'll cut through the plane to the sort of nice and neat. So here we go, it's by Pablo Gill. And there's our boat. And I can't use it, you have to download it. So I'm gonna click, click right here on download all files. And it's gonna download it into my computer, to my downloads folder by default. Uh, if you're, uh, or your computer should also typically download to your downloads folder, unless you change it, but most people don't change that setting there. All right, let me close that out. I'm using Google Chrome here as my file explorer, as my, sorry, as my web browser to uh, browse the internet, and Google Chrome gives me a shortcut here to my file. So I'm gonna click on it there. Uh, right now I cannot use this file because it's compressed, it's smashed down, so it occupies less space than Thingiverse, so they don't have to pay for a lot of space. Now, they still got to pay for space, but not that much, and it's free for us. So thank you, thank you, MakerBot. All right, so I open that folder up, and I need to uh, extract this because it's zipped up into a folder. Sorry, it's zipped up into a zip file, so I need to extract it. Right now it's compressed, so I got to extract it. So open it up, and if this is not ready to go here, click on Extract or Compress Folder Tools, and then click Extract All, and then this, this will unpackage it, extract it, so you can use it. It's going to go to the Downloads folder. I can change the location so it goes somewhere else by clicking on Browse, but... Downloads folder is okay, so I'm going to click Extract here. All right, and there it is. It's done. Let me just close these windows out. I don't need these. I'm going to go back over here to Blender. Blender, Blender, Blender. Here we go. And I'm going to bring it in here. The file just downloaded is an SEO file. I know that just out of, out of habit, so let me show you guys how you guys can find out. Okay, so I opened up a File Explorer window here. I went to my Downloads folder, and um, here's the folder that the file is in. Usually... After you extract your um, whatever folder you download from Thingiverse or zip folder, it creates a file called it creates a folder called files. In this case, you give it a name. But once I open it, there might be another folder in there called files. So let's find out. I'm gonna double click it and double click that one. All right, this one did not have a file in there called the files, a folder in there called the files. But um, there's my there's my file there. Uh, I have a setting here, so it gives me the extension, so I know it's an SEO file. If you don't have that activated, just right click your file there once you find it. And then go to properties and you'll be, you'll be able to see it there right here. So it says .stl. The other file formats are in uh, Thingiverse or .obj. This was an STL, so I'm cool. If you're using the exact same one that I downloaded then, it'll be an STL. You don't need to check like I just did. The symbol right here will vary depending on the other software you have on your computer. Uh, that's the MakerBot logo, but you might have something else. All right, so I don't need this window there. I want to bring in this file. I'm going to go over here to File, Import to bring in my 3D model. So I need to go to STL because that's an STL file. So that's why I went back and checked. If it was an OBJ file, I got to go to OBJ. I go to STL and I can't find anything. It's a different file format. So STL right here. And then that's over in the Downloads folder. So I'm going to click on Downloads right there. And it's inside this folder right here. Double click it open. Double click that one open. And here it is, double click that open. Barquito, cool. All right, so there it is. Uh, right now it's humongous. So yours might be really small or really big relative to your uh, plane there. So you gotta scale it up. If you wanna scale something down, scale it up or scale it down. Uh, to make it smaller, I'm gonna move a mouse away from it. Hit selected, hit the S key, and then move the mouse inward. That'll make it smaller. If it's super small, you wanna make it bigger, hover the mouse on it, hit S, and then pull away. Uh, be careful, because you might flip it over. There we go. Oh, let me actually, I think I'll bring it down to, I tried this earlier. I think I got a number down here. How small I want to make it, and I think it's a tenth of the original size. And uh, it's a, a 20th. So that's S.05. Enter. There we go. That's a good size for it. And let me hit the decimal key to zoom and center that. There we go. Cool. All right, I'm going to pull this up. So it's over here on the uh, on the side of the plane. Uh, well, first, let's make it into a brush. Let's make it into a brush. I got it selected there. Over here, properties panel, select uh, physics. Click dynamic paint, dynamic paint there. And then right here for type, change it to brush right there, brush. From canvas to brush, it's gonna be our brush. There we go. And it's still on a brush, you gotta click add brush, add brush. There we go. Now it's a brush. All right, so now I'll start animating it. So now I have, this is the brush. That's my canvas. And I'm going to start the animation. So um, the boat starts here at the top of the plane and then works its way down. So I'm going to hit 7 for top view. There we go. Got the boat there selected. I'm going to hit G for grabbing Y so I can pull it up along the Y axis right there. 
directly right up. If you want, you can put it somewhere else, but I'm gonna put it there. It's gonna go in a straight line this way. All right, I'm gonna hit three for right view. Let me zoom in. Uh, my boat's actually not penetrating the plane. It needs to cut through the plane. Right now, it's just floating on top of it. So if it's sitting right on it, so if I animate this, it's not gonna create any ripples because it's not cutting through the plane. I need to cut through it. My plane's actually right here in the green line. I can't see it because it's, it's paper thin, literally. See? So I'm gonna hit Shift Z to activate the wireframe. And I should be able to see it uh, better. There it is. There's my boat. And then there's a thin black line there. And that's my plane. See? Three for right view. I'm going to have my boat here selected. I'm going to bring it down into the plane. G for grab the Z for the Z axis and pull it down for what looks like a good, uh, a good cut there. Uh, the bigger the cut, the bigger the waves you'll get, the better wave uh, animation you'll get. So there's a cut through it. Shift Z so I can go back to the solid viewport shader so I can see again. There we go. All right, let's uh, let's take it off a notch. So right now we have here the wireframe, which I had uh, earlier. You can see the wireframe of it. And this is a solid viewport shader. I'm gonna go over here to render the last one right there. And that'll give me a preview of the final render. There we go. I get this pixelation issue right here. That's just my computer. Uh, maybe yours too, it's a glitch I have. I'm gonna go over here to the render tab. And I'm gonna change something over here. I'm gonna click on screen space reflections, and that'll take it off. There we go. And you should do too, because later we're gonna make this water, and you need to activate this for um, water to be reflective. So go ahead and click on the render tab, activate screen space reflections, activate bloom, give you a little bit of a glow, ambient occlusion, give you some of that ambient light, and motion blur. So later um, you get some of that motion blur as it moves ac um, across the plane. All right, set for top view. And I'm gonna record it here in Blender that my, my boat's gonna start up here in frame one. Let me bring up the timeline panel here. Just hover over, uh, hover your mouse over the dividing edge there. Hold down the left mouse button and pull up. There we go. Make sure on uh, frame one, I'm at zero for some reason. Let me just hit one in here, one, enter. Zero works too, but let's go with frame one. All right, there it is at frame one. And it's up here at the top, boat selected there. Oh, there it is now selected. I key and location, rotation scale, click there. Cool, all right, there's a keyframe there now. There's a little yellow diamond that was not there before. That's letting me know that that's where the boat's gonna start at frame one. Now I'm gonna go over to the last frame and click on this button right here, the arrow, the arrow of the triangle with the slash, with the dash there. It takes me all the way to the end. There it is. You can also try clicking on 250 there. And now while I'm in 250, frame 250, I'm gonna bring it down across the plane. GY, and I'm still on top of you here, bringing it up. Boom. And I'm gonna hit the I key, location, rotation, scale to record that for the location, rotation, and scale change there. It's mainly just a, well, it's only just a location change, but that covers all my bases there. I have two keyframes. So uh, keyframe one, I'm up here. Keyframe 250, I'm down there. All right, so I'm gonna change my view here just so I can see the simulation. I just held down the middle mouse button as I move the mouse. So I can orbit around, spin the wheel to zoom in and out. I'm at the play button and I can see my waves here. Let's see, I can see some waves there, zoom in. Cool. All right, so yours might look like this too. They look pixelated. So go ahead and click on your plane. You can smooth it out right now, click on your plane and then right click your plane, select shade smooth. Cool, so now they're gonna look smoother. Smoother waves, there we go. The lighting is a little bit bad, so we'll fix that later. But now uh, it should look a lot neater. You see there at the beginning. There we go. There's actually water inside my boat, and I'll fix that later. I don't want my boat to sink. Hey, the boat's sinking. All right. So now I'm going to go over here and color my water. So it looks like actual water. Let's check this out. Have your plane selected. Make sure your plane is selected. Go up here in the, um, the workspaces. Click on shading. It's going to optimize my... Uh, our workspace here for shading. There we go. So here's my 3D viewport window, just like the one at layout. And this is a new window I have right here called the uh, node editor, or the shader, sorry, shader editor. Yeah, shader editor. All right, so I'm gonna add a material here. I'm gonna click on you right here to create a new material. If I go over here to materials, I can also create a material there. And if you notice that button there is actually the same as that one. See, there's that marble icon as well. They're actually the same button. I can click this one or that one, and I'll get a material. There we go, cool. I'm gonna name my material, I can name it here, I can double click in there, or I can double click in here, and I can name it something. 
coil water. There we go. Enter. And there it is, see water. All right. Um, right here, see this right here, principal BSCF? That's the same as this right here. These are all these parameters here are right over here. Metallic, metallic, specular, specular. Let me zoom out. See, they're all there. Even the um, these little dots here, the sockets, they're also there as well. See, there's a purple one there for subsurface radius. Purple one there for subsurface radius, base color, yellow. There it is. All right. Be careful clicking on those because then you get other stuff. All right, so I'm going to delete this one right here. So I got to click on it because right now these are both selected. So I'm just going to click on this one right here. I'm going to click inside this area. There we go. Now I'm going to delete it. I'm going to, I'm going to make my own setup right here. I'm going to bring in a mixed shader so I can mix up two different types of shaders. That one was the principal BSCF shader. I'm going to create my own over here. I'm going to bring some in. I notice I lost the color there because there's no color. There's nothing going in, into this right here into the material output. Hover your mouse inside the, the, the bottom window here, shader editor, hit shift A. Shift A is your add menu. So up here in 3D viewport, I can bring in mesh, right? And down here, I can use the same shortcut, Shift A, but I can bring in other stuff. I can bring in the shaders. And you get a search bar. I'm clicking that search bar there. And I'm going to type in mix, M-I-X. There it is. And I'm going to click on this one, mix shader. And it's already selected. As soon as you bring it in, I haven't clicked anything. See, I can move it around. Paste it somewhere. I want to put it right here to the left of the material output right there. Left click, bam. All right. Now I'm going to bring in two more. I'm going to bring in Refraction BSDF and Glossy BSDF. Shift A, Search, Refraction. Here it is, Refraction BSDF. Put this one up top. And now I'm going to bring in another one called Glossy. Shift A, Search, Glossy. GL, there it is. There's one called Glass. You can try that one out too. But I'm, I'm going to go with Glossy right here. Click on it and drop it right here. Now I'm going to connect these. I'm going to connect these with these uh, the sockets there. So I'll connect this one here first. So here's a shader, green and green right there. Hold down the left mouse button on one of those sockets and pull the mouse out so you get a line and it'll snap to those, see? I'm gonna put it here on surface, let go. If you accidentally put it on the wrong one like down here, just go back in there, hold it again and pull it back up. There you go, hold down the left mouse button and pull it. And this one right here, uh, BSCF, I'm gonna connect to the top one right here for shader. There we go. That's for uh, refraction, that's how light bends off of uh, surfaces. Uh, IOR, index of refraction for water, it's 1.333, a bunch of threes, three to infinite power. There we go. And you can already see here, it's already being reflective. Uh, roughness, I'm going to increase it a bit. I'm going to try dot zero five, a little, a, little, a little bit of roughness. And I'm going to connect the uh, glossiness right here. I'll hold on the left mouse button on the green socket there, bring it up, snap it to the other one. There you go, release. Cool. Look at that, look at that. And roughness here, I'm going to actually bring it down to zero, make it nice and smooth. There we go. Nice and reflective, looking like water there. All right. And now I want to make one for my boat here. I want to make it look like a paper boat. So I'm going to click on my boat right here. There we go. Let me zoom into it. I'm at the decimal key on the number pad zoom in center. You can always spin the wheel, get up closer to it. There we go. All right. And like I mentioned, you can hit this button or this right here for new, create a new material. Because this will be a new material separate from the water one. This one you, and I'm just going to call this one paper there, P-A, P-A-P-E-R, there we go, enter, paper, paper, money, money, all right, I'm going to click right here on pencil BSCF so I can delete that, I can try making paper with these, uh, but actually, honestly, I think with these, you would not be able to make paper, but you can try making other materials with that, I'm going to click in here, and then delete it, there we go, and I'm going to bring in one called Add Shader. So earlier I brought in Mix Shader. This one's called Add Shader. Shift A, Search, Add. There you go, Shader, Add Shader. Left click there. And I'm going to bring in one called Noise Texture. Noise Texture. Shift A, Search, Noise Texture. Noise Texture. Here we go. Drop it right there. Noise to, uh, to define noise. I guess it would be like the static you would see on those old school TVs. The old uh, analog TVs, the static, the black and white uh uh, what is that called? Little sparkles or whatever. That, that would be noise. And if you look up close at paper, it does kind of have a pattern similar to that. Little, little, little dots of random, randomness in there. Little bits of randomness. All right. And then what I'm going to put here in both of these is going to be diffuse BSDF and subsurface scattering. Shift A, search, diffuse. There we go. Click on that one. Left click there, drop it. And subsurface scattering. Shift A, search. Some surface scattering. There you go. Drop it. This will be for um, I would scatter. See, uh, I think the pattern on it. 
I'm going to connect these here. This one's going to go to the one up top. Hold on, left mouse button, drag. This one's going to be color right here. Color down over here to displacement because we're going to displace it there. Color to displacement. There we go. And then shader here to surface. Bam. All right. And then I'm going to change some of these uh, patterns here. See, it's already kind of got like a paper color. And there we go. Oh, see, there it is. It took a while to load it. So uh, it looks kind of weird, so we'll fix it up in a bit. So here for color, you can try making it all white. You can bring in, in some yellow in there. I think I'm just going to click a little bit in there. Not too much. It's going to get a little too crazy. You can try making it brighter, bring up the, val the value here. There we go. Yeah, it looks like an off-white color there. And then down here for scale, I'm going to increase this to 100 for the scattering. There it is. Oh, helps out with some of that blurriness. Uh, but this weird pattern here, that's the noise. So I'm going to fix that up now for scale here. I'm going to reduce it down to 0.1. There we go. And it makes those that, that weird pattern a lot smaller. And then for detail, I want more detail in there. So I'm going to increase this to 20. You can see it a better. Yeah, how's it looking so far? Is it still loading? Uh, let's see. Still looks kind of weird, but oh, I know what's going on. Uh, not color, it's factor. Factor is the one supposed to be connected here. So I'm gonna hold down the left mouse button on factor, bring it over the displacement there, and here we go. It's loading. And it's a little heavy here to render all that. And there we go. Nice cool paper look. You can play around with these settings here. Let me go over here to render. I'm gonna click on render and give me a better look there. There we go. See? Looks like paper. Almost looks like uh like the surface of cardboard. But uh, this other one's too bright, so I'm gonna it rendered and now it looks a lot more like paper. Alright. And remember it's factor to displacement, not color. That was my error earlier. So make sure factor the displacement. Alright, so now I wanna um, a 3D uh, environment here. Let me go over here to layout. Uh, I have this gray background. Here, make sure you're in the render viewport shader. And this gray background is not going to look that good. Because see the water here? It looks gray. And I'm sure there's gray water out there. It might not be clean water. But there's some gray water out there. And then that's not what we want. We want, uh, we want it to reflect something else. So the only thing it's reflecting right now is the boat. So it doesn't look very reflective. So I'm going to bring in an HDRI file. Which is like a 360 uh, picture, 360 capture of something. I'm going to bring it in here, and then uh, that'll work a lot neater. It'll reflect off our water. So I like going to his website, hcrihaven.com, hcrihaven.com, and I can bring in these three free 360 pictures. They're called HDRIs or just HDRs. I'm going to click right here on HDRIs. And here's a bunch of pictures. Uh, well, not pictures, they're HDRI files. Let me see. So I'm going to go here on the left side. I'm going to click on nature. Loading, loading, loading. All right. And then I'm going to click on river right here. So these are uh, just my filters here. There we go. And I can choose one of these. So you want to go something with the body of water in it. Uh, I'm going to go with this one right here. But there's other stuff. Actually, you know, I don't like that one. That one's kind of dark. Because it actually, the, the light in these will actually be, uh, will take effect inside blender so blender will respect the light source that's in there so i'm going to bring in one of these and then delete the lamp that i have in there i'm going to use this one right over here i like this one here it's nice and bright crystal falls so i'm going to click on it to select it i still don't have it why it was selected all right it's loading the page let me scroll down this is where you download them oftentimes uh get new users they'll right click here and go to save image as and that's not an hri file you're getting a picture it's a huge picture, but that's not that's not how you do it. I'm gonna scroll down here and click on 4K, and that'll give you the HDRI file or any of these. I like them with 4K. That looks like a good quality there. These are higher quality, but um, I think these are just overkill. I'm not going for complete realism, and these are just too low. So 4K works just fine. It's not too big of a file. So you can see here, it's um, a little bit over a quarter the size of this one. This one's almost four times bigger. It looks like they're in there by um increments of four all right so mine already downloaded so my internet is going pretty fast right now that's not always the case but right now i'm killing it all right so i'm going to go back over here to blender that file downloaded over to my downloads folder i know that because by default it goes to my downloads folder so now i want to bring it into blender so it's the uh the background here 
all over here to the properties panel click on the red earth right there the world tab world properties there click on the red earth and then on the right side right here this color and you see that yellow dot you can click on it if you look at this gray there's actually the same gray that's back there i can change this to another color i can change the color of the background see oh blue look at that blue water all right but we're going to bring in this hri file look a lot neater because usually water it's not just blue it reflects everything around it so i'm going to click on this yellow uh, socket here just like our node set up over there and go to environment texture environment so we're bringing this into the world 360 environment everything around this environment texture right there boom all right so it's still right in here that just allowed us so we can bring it in so it's this magenta picture so i'm going to go over here to open and then downloads right here at the magenta background and there's my file there crystal falls underscore 4k and the quality of it double click it in and wait a moment it does take uh, does take a while for it to fully load could be a few seconds a good strong 10 seconds there we go cool and look at that you can see it reflecting off of the plane here and our plane is also uh, somewhat transparent i can see the stuff underneath the plane as well and it reflects stuff around it all right So I'm going to go ahead and hit the uh, play button here. See the animation there, the simulation. Cool. All right, there's some water inside of it. Uh, you can try fixing that up. It's a little tricky. So instead, all I'm going to do, I'm just going to angle it like this so you don't got to see it to make it easier. So I'm going to try something like, uh, I kind of want to do this angle. The thought water there is not moving, so it just looks like a regular picture. So I'll probably do something like this. There we go. I'm going to make this my camera view. So all I did was I held down the middle mouse button. And I did this. This is not my camera view. This is the user view. So this is what the user sees. Hit zero on the number pad. This is the camera view right there. But I want this right here to be my uh, my my camera view. Let me hold down the shift key, middle mouse button, so I can pan. There you go, something like that. All right, so now I'm going to make this my camera view. I'm going to hit control, alternate zero. There we go. And let's see how the boat moves through there. Let me go to frame one, click on this button here, play button. See how my boat moves through there. There it goes. And it's coming towards the camera. Let's see how far it ends up at the last frame. Let me skip over to the last frame there. And it looks like it goes through, uh, through the camera there. So maybe I want to step back a bit more. So let me uh, get out of that view. I've just pushed in the mouse, the middle mouse button. And let me try a little further away, like over here. Go to the first frame. That looks cool there. Control, alternate zero. There you go. Now this is my camera view. That's cool. Uh, but the uh, the bottom of the plane here, sorry, this edge of the plane there is uh, inside of the frame of the camera. So you're going to see that down there. And I don't want you to see that. So I'm going to click on the frame there for the camera. GZ, pull it up. That way the bottom of the uh, the edge there, the water plane, it's outside of the frame. There we go. And G for grab, pull it over. Maybe I don't want that to be visible as well. So I'm R, Z for zebra. And rotate my camera this way so it's not visible to the your typical viewer. There we go. Play button. And that on the distance. I don't mind that. There we go. And we go over here to the last frame. Click on that button there. There we go. Uh, if you don't let the simulation run, you won't see all the waves. You have to let it play. You'll see all the waves. I jumped over to the last frame. You don't see waves here. You see some at the beginning and then the ones at the end. That's okay. You can still see the water that's in there. All right, so let me fix that up. I'm going to click on my boat right here. There we go. Let me go over to frame one. And I'm going to bring in, uh, I'm going to bring in a plane, another plane. And I'm going to use that to cover that up. So you can see right there. All right, so I'm going to shift A, mesh plane. And I'm going to put that plane inside that boat. I'm going to G for grab and then shift Z. That way it doesn't go up and down. It just stays flat. Bring it over here inside the boat. There we go. I meant the decimal key on my number pad to zoom and center that. There it is. I'm going to make this plane bigger. That way it curves up the whole boat there through the center cross section there. There we go. You can still see some of the water coming through there. The, this plane that I just brought in the water plane are on the same level. So I need to bring up this plane down here so it's a little bit higher. Covers up any water coming up. GZ. There we go. That looks good. There's a gap in there. Uh, leave the boat. Make sure it penetrates the water plane, the one below it. That way it creates the ripples. Because if it doesn't penetrate it, it doesn't make it. All right. So this one right here, the one I just brought in, I brought it up, I had GZ, pulled it up, so it's enough to cover up the water there. Now I'm going to go over here to the uh, Properties panel, click on the blue wrench there for the Modifier tab. 
and you're going to use a modifier for this. I'm going to click on Add Modifier. I'm going to use Boolean right there, Boolean. There we go. This will allow us to uh, join these together and create new geometry for us. Uh, there is another shortcut you can hit Control J to join them, but it's not going to work the same. You got to use Boolean right here, and right here for Object. You can click in here and select your boat. For some reason, you got a bunch of stuff in here. You're not sure which one's the boat. Go ahead and click on the little eyedropper here, the pipette, yeah, the sampler, whatever you want to call it. Click on it, bring it over, and then click on your boat there. And then your boat will appear in there. Cool. All right. So there it is. Now I got to apply this. So up here, there's a share around, a little arrow. Click on it, and then select apply, and it'll apply it. There we go. All right. So now I got to get rid of the extra... Uh, the extra stuff out here, right? Make sure your uh, new plane there is selected. Go over to edit mode. You can hit the tab key or you can go up here to object and select edit mode there. All right. I want to delete the stuff here on the outside. So I'm going to go here to face selection. I'm going to click on this face there. Click delete or X key and select faces here from the delete menu. And same thing with this other section here. Click on it, delete faces. There we go. So I'm left with that in the inside. So I'm going to go back over here to object mode. And we get the tab key, you can toggle back and forth. All right, so now it's there to cover it up, but it's not part of the boat. So if I hit the play button, it's going to leave it behind. Go ahead and hit the play button <laughs> and put it back where it was. All right, so I need to join these now. I got that inside part selected. And I'm going to hold on the shift key, select the boat last. Make sure you select the boat last. Select the boat. Make sure you have the uh, water plane there selected. You should have a yellow glow. Hold on the shift key and then click on your boat. There we go. So the boat should have a yellow glow. The inside part should have a red-orange glow. It's hard to see. It's a little tricky. The colors are very similar. And then hit Control j And now they're joined. And then the inside part here also has that, um, that color of the paper. If for some reason you did it backwards, you're gonna, you might lose that color of the paper, the paper material. So go here to Materials. Click New if you have to, and then click inside the marble icon here. And then select the paper one that you made. And it'll, it'll go on there. If it still doesn't go on there, if you have two of these, click on the one that you don't want and then hit the minus and it'll make it go away. All right, cool. So there we go. We're almost done here. No, we're actually, we're basically done. Go over here to the render tab. Make sure you activated these four right here. All right, let me hit zero for the, the camera view. Cool, got my good angle there. All right, this next part is vital for your uh, render animation. So notice we got the waves here. So we need to tell Blender we want that. Because right now it's just sorting these uh, these wave formations there in a temporary cache folder in the computer. So what you want to do is go over here and click on your water plane. You got a water plane selected. Properties panel. Go back to physics tab. And scroll down in here. Open up cache right there. Cache A, cache. Click in there. Open it up. Scroll inside of there. You're going to want to click bake. It says bake down there. I got the stupid uh, activate windows to, uh, alert thing right there. So it's a little hard to see, but it says bake down there. So, um, but it doesn't work right now. It's grayed out. You got to save your file first. So I'm going to file, save as, and I'm going to save it. Let's just see. Paper boat. Uh, USS. United States ship. USS paper boat. I'm going to call it that. USS paper boat. Sim for simulation. All right, and that's going to go on my desktop. And you can put it wherever you want. And I'm going to hit save as right there. All right, that's the Blender file. And then after it saves, then I can bake. There it is. Now I have the option to bake. I'm going to click on bake there. Oh, make sure. Let me pause. Let me stop that. Make sure you go to frame one and then hit bake. I think it still went to frame one. Uh, but when you bake, you want to make sure everything is done. Uh, you're not going to do any more movements. Everything's in place. Uh, you can still go back and color it but you don't want to move your plane around or your boat or resize it um, if you're going to render. Uh, you can still make changes, but then you got to delete bake and redo the bake. Make sure you're in frame one and then hit bake. There we go. All right, so save it first. Frame one and then bake. All right, it's baked. So now when I play, it actually plays a little faster. It's now it uh, re recorded that into Blender. Let's see. All right, cool, cool, cool. Now I'm going to go over here to output. I'm just going to export my video file. So file format from PNG, change it to AVI JPEG. If you leave it as PNG, you're going to get 250 pictures. I don't think you want that. So you're going to go over here with the video file. And then click on the folder here to choose a name for your video and a location to export it to. So I'm going to desktop. And then USS 
paper, paper boat for, I think I'll put paper, 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 money, money. Anybody knows that song, leave it in the comments. If anybody knows the artist of that song. All right, you assess paper boat and then accept. And there we go. And then to render this out, you can hit control F12 on your keyboard or you can go to render here and render animation. Bam, wait patiently. It could be anywhere from a few minutes to half an hour, hour, depends on your computer. You wanna wait this out. All right, so there you have it. We got the waves, thankfully to the for the bake. If your waves uh, don't look as good as this, maybe you didn't bake. That's usually what happens. But thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Be kind to others, to yourself. And uh, let's get uh, 2020, 2021, let's make it better than 2020. You can help the channel by subscribing, liking, leaving a comment, sharing, anything else. Take care. Bye.